Welcome into Scoops with Danny Mac on Fox 2. I'm Dan McLaughlin. As sports deals with COVID-19, clearly it hasn't been easy at all to get through the various seasons, but sports, both pro and college, are managing to make it. The focus of this show will be on college athletics. Jim Sterk heads up the athletic department at Mizzou. Conzo Martin, his basketball coach, has a team that has been one of the better squads this season in the SEC. And Eli Drinkwitz has a ton of momentum with spring football just around the corner. We'll talk it over with the director of athletics at Mizzou. Ben Fredrickson from the Post-Dispatch will give us his thoughts on Arch Madness. It's here this week, St. Louis University, and the finish of the college basketball season. And finally, after 33 years as the commissioner of the Missouri Valley Conference, Doug Elgin has decided to step down. But his impact on the game of college basketball will be felt for years. This past week, the MVC named the MVP award for the conference in honor of both Patty Beverito and Doug Elgin. The St. Louis-based Missouri Valley Conference has become a national force on the college basketball scene. And certainly this week in St. Louis, we get it all going. It's Arch Madness. Let's bring in a longtime commissioner of the Missouri Valley Conference, Doug Elgin, who has done so much for our town. He's done so much for college basketball and he's retiring after 33 years. First of all, Kamish, great to see you. Um, let's start with this. Why do you want to retire? I'm, I'm assuming this year has not been easy. It hasn't been easy on anybody, but why retiring after 33 years? Well, I, I think uh, part of it is grandchildren and, and my, my daughters are all here. We've got six daughters between us and a little more family time. And, you know, once you hit 70, which I did recently, you begin to think about, you know, taking taking more time for your family and for things you like to do. In terms of your career and you reflect on it, especially with the Valley, what are you most proud of as you look back on it? Well, I've, I've said this several times on these types of interviews. It's, it's keeping our staff together. The, the continuity that we've had is remarkable. We've got four people who've worked 30 or more years, another one approaching 30, and a retired person who was here 30 years plus. So I think had had it not been for that continuity, there were there would have been a lot of things we could not simply have have accomplished if we had, had a lot of change in, in our senior staff. In terms of COVID, you have done a remarkable job to get games in. Um, have you become kind of the the centerpiece and example, the valley of, of how to try to deal with this and get a full schedule in? Well, I think others on our staff have said this. Greg Walter on our staff has piloted our, our COVID efforts done a remarkable job and I would compare our protocols and our and our and our safety uh, policies to those of any conference in the country. He's done a tremendous job navigating. Uh, we will probably play all 90 men's games and women's games uh, this year and that three months ago it looked like that would be an impossibility. What is it like the day to day when you're a commissioner and you're trying to get games in with the policies and the protocols? that you have to deal with? Is it is it almost like, okay, here we go, I gotta wake up in the morning and find out what's gonna hit us next kind of thing? For a while there, it was like that. It was a, it was a desperate scramble to find the windows where we could move games that had been postponed to later parts of the schedule. But we prepared for that by having a couple of games move before January 1, and that gave us some space in which we could, um, you know, readjust our schedule as it, as it became necessary. You made St. Louis the base for the Missouri Valley Conference. Why was this the right place for you all, after all these years? Well, we were in Tulsa till the mid-1980s, I think, and moved here. Uh, and I think it was uh, the, the more the center of our geographic footprint to be in St. Louis. Uh, we moved our tournament here, our men's tournament here, which was a, a pivotal move for us in terms of our branding and growing our, str our strength as a conference. We moved it here because we – the staff lives here. So instead of moving campus to campus every year and reinventing the wheel, we brought it here where we could really perfect it and use that to help attract NCAA tournament events. And we've had two women's final fours, a men's final four, and about 11 other first and second round and regional men's events that we brought to town in concert with the, uh, with the St. Louis Sports Commission. Arch Madness, it's always one of the great times of the year for any sports fan in town. How would you describe Arch Madness to a casual fan that maybe hasn't been there? Well, what would you say it's all about? It's a family affair, really. And uh, our 
our teams like nothing better than to come here and leave St. Louis and do some damage in the NCAA tournament. And I think that's one of the things that our staff is really proud of is how well we have competed, not only in men's basketball, but in women's basketball as well with, uh, with postseason play and the opponents that we've been able to beat in, in the NCAA tournaments. When you look at this year's positioning for the Missouri Valley Conference going into Arch Madness, potentially the NCAA tournament, how many teams do you think realistically you can get into the big dance? I think we should get two, uh, without doubt. On the men's side, two with Loyola and Drake. And I would have to say that if there's an upset, I think we'd be in position to potentially get three teams. Uh, and, and this is the first time in five years that we have been in this solid a position going into postseason to be able to make those uh, have those expectations on Selection Sunday. Do you think the committee is going to be more lenient this year on teams that have been hit with COVID and, and have to do, truly have to do their homework more so this year than ever? Oh, I do think so. And, you know, it's, it's nothing's normal. Our, our teams played back-to-back games on consecutive days, two away games on the road on consecutive days, two home games, same thing. And, and that put a lot of extra pressure on our teams uh, in terms of recovery time in playing two games in a, in a very short period of time. And with rescheduling, some teams had four or five consecutive road games. And again, we understood it's a pandemic year. Nothing's going to be fair. Nothing's going to be balanced or equal. And our teams and our student athletes and, and their fan bases have all understood that. As you reflect on your career, Kamish, I'll wrap it up with this. Um, what do you want to be known for in, in college basketball or in college athletics as a whole? Well, I think I think really doing what I could do and what our staff could do and building our, our brands and, and, and putting all of our teams in a position where they could become relevant, could compete nationally. And I think in almost every team sport that we sponsor, we've seen that happen. Baseball, softball, uh, volleyball. Um, you know, and certainly the two basketballs are, are without exception there. We've been very competitive, uh, verging on that upper echelon of high majors uh, in some years, in some sports, and uh, just really proud of the way in which our student athletes have represented us and our presidents and administrators have led our league. You think we'll get some fans in for Arch Madness? We will. We will. Thanks to the good graces of the Enterprise Center and the St. Louis Board of Health, we're going to have fans. Uh, we know that we're going to have at least 2,100, maybe 2,600 uh, in our uh, that we can have as a maximum uh, attendance at our tournaments. And, and certainly our fans are going to be dying to see their teams, and we're going to certainly sell those tickets out very quickly. Congratulations, Commission on Retirement, and thank you for everything that you've done for our great city here in St. Louis. Uh, thank you for having me on, Dan. Always good to see you. You too. That's the commissioner of the MVC, Doug Elgin. We're back with Jim Sturk, the director of athletics at Mizzou, when we come back. Scoops with Danny Mack is brought to you by Schnucks, Lou Fuse, Royal Banks of Missouri, and Ryan Kelly, the home loan expert. Welcome back to Scoops with Danny Mac on Fox 2. A reminder, there's daily content on the website, scoopswithdannymac.com. Podcasts, features, articles. If you've missed Bernie Miklas and his writing, you can see it all daily on scoopswithdannymac.com. Missouri has knocked off LSU. First year coach Eli Drinkwitz has a signature victory over the defending national champs. Undoubtedly, one of the best victories of the season for Mizzou football this past year is they beat then the defending national champions, LSU. And let's welcome in Jim Sturt to the show. Jim, uh, first of all, by being the director of athletics and seeing that kind of win, what did that mean for your program? And by the way, it's great to see you. Uh, thanks. It's uh, it's great to be on here. And, and yeah, it was uh, – at the time, most significant win, you know, we've had in, in a long, long time in football. And, and it was, uh, um, you, you didn't know where LSU was go going, but it certainly gave a jump start to to uh, Coach Drinkwitz's tenure at, uh, at, at Faro, that's for sure. You know, I, I can tell you here in St. Louis, the fan base, the alumni base, they are, I mean, they're, they're excited about what Coach Drink is doing here from your seat. Give us your evaluation and, and how you think he's doing so far. 
Well, it, it's really interesting. You know, looking back a year ago, we, we didn't get any spring ball. And, and it's, that's especially tough when you're, you know, an incoming coach. He hadn't laid out the system. So I'm really excited about, you know, the, the future under his leadership and, and his ability and his staff's ability to teach and grow our, our players individually, but then as a team. And I, I think the, the, the sky is, is the limit. It's, it, the future is very, very bright. Um, we have a lot of momentum going into spring ball and to be able to have a full set of practices in the, in the spring and then, and then summer to prepare um, for a great fall, fall season. Pull back the curtain, if you can, a little bit for the fans of, of the, the football program. Um, from our vantage point, we see a guy that looks to be uh, just boundless energy. He's bringing in really good recruits, big name recruits, and guys to help really turn this thing into being a top 20, top 10 program. So the boundless energy part is really what I was getting at. What, what's it like being around Coach Drink day in and day out? Uh, he's a character, you know, and, and, and what you see is what you get and, and, but extremely, um, thoughtful, um, smart, uh, you know, great engaging personality that you see come across even on a zoom or, or interviews that you get. Um, that's, that's who he is. Uh, it, you know, what you see is what you get. And, uh, when, I think it was the first day we're introducing him to the team and, and the team's walking by and they haven't met him. You know, they don't know him from Adam and, and they're shaking hands with him. And, you know, and he has his glasses on. He's like, Hey, you know, don't, don't let the glasses fool you. You know, I'll, <laughs> I'll take you, I'll take you out on the field right now. Let's go, you know, type of thing. And, and just, uh, you know, his, his personality comes across and it, it, it is genuine. What is it like being a director of athletics and trying to get through COVID-19 to make sure your kids are healthy, your staff is healthy, and just doing everything you can right to follow the protocols. What, what has that been like day in and day out? You know, the best example is um, we're in over 100 um, meetings, Zoom calls with the SEC, uh, our ADs and, and the commissioner and his staff uh, in the past year. And prior years, it was 11 uh, telephone calls and maybe four four in person meetings. So, just the the volume and the difference of changing uh, changing landscape almost on a daily basis of what you're dealing with and and having to be flexible and and coaches are really you know focused and they're they're dialed in and and that you know in order to be be very good um, you know they have to have that that mentality. But from an administrative standpoint. We can't, you know, you can't plan next week sometimes, and so it's it's a big difference um, being able to to adjust and 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 our coaches uh, have done a great job, and our student athletes have have been through a lot, and uh, but we're keeping them safe. We're showing that you can do it. The SEC has had a couple championships, a football championship, and and conducted soccer championships in the fall. The NCAA hasn't had one in over a year, and so that's why you see all the detail going into the men's and women's basketball uh, championship that they're planning to host in San Antonio and in Indy. And in terms of basketball with Conzo and, and what he's done with the program this year, uh, how would you evaluate what's, uh, what's happening on the hard court? Yeah, he he took over a program. I don't know where we were in the net, if you will, um, when he took over four years ago. We were 160 or something like that, and and we're sitting, you know, moving up and down a little bit. But but with Jeremiah back af after his uh, the unfortunate death in his family and and taking some time time there, uh, I thought they they were refocused. They really played well. And uh, I'm excited. Not, at the start of the year, I thought, OK, we've got to have basketball season this year, especially because this team could make a deep run into the SEC tournament, but also in the NCAA tournament in, in March. So um, stay tuned. I think it's going to be fun. Jim, thanks so much for your time. Appreciate it. And good luck with the fall football season and with college basketball wrapping up. Thanks so much. Thanks, Dan. That's Jim Sturk, director of athletics at Mizzou. Back with more in a moment. Scoops with Danny Mac is brought to you by Blue Tail Medical Group, Royal Banks of Missouri, Hair Saloon for Men, and Triad Bank.
Welcome back to Scoops with Danny Mac on Fox 2. A reminder, there's daily content on the website, scoopswithdannymac.com. Podcast features, articles. If you've missed Bernie Miklas and his writing, you can see it all daily on scoopswithdannymac.com. This is Scoops with Danny Mac on Fox 2, and we do this every Sunday at 1030. And let's bring in Ben Fredrickson from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. And Ben, we have heard from Jim Sturk. We heard from the Valley Commissioner, Doug Elgin. I want to start with Doug. Doesn't get enough credit for what he has meant for basketball overall, but certainly in this town. What do you think his legacy will be? Well, I think he has to be remembered as the man who made Arch Madness happen here in St. Louis. And college-wide, I think he has to be remembered and celebrated for his, for his tenure. I mean, this is such a fast-paced world of college sports now. There's such a high amount of turnover in these jobs. He's been consistent, steady, and he, him and his team at the Missouri Valley Conference have encountered obstacles where people said, oh, this is really going to set the conference back, or this team leaving will hurt. And, and they've just weathered the storm. They've gotten better, and they've, they've held their place and improved it, and he's been one of the longest-tenured guys around. So I think you know, long-term success, sustainability in a, in a college athletics market that is hard Hard to find those things. That's what he should be remembered and celebrated for, Dan. Plus, he put up with Greg Marshall, which that's a hard thing to do. <laughs> he deserves extra points for that, too. Yeah, you should get hazard pay for that, man. <laughs> no doubt. I'll tell you that much. Um, I want to ask you, too, about SLU, because here we are winding up the college basketball season. Depending on what publication you follow or expert that does the first four in, first four out, they've been right on the bubble. They have to take a look. The selection committee, more so than ever this year, on what teams went through with COVID. And I would think that at the first, maybe the one of the top teams that you look at, one or two first on that list might be St. Louis University. Well, I hope the selection committee shows some, some common sense here. And that's always a risk when you're, when you're betting on that. But here's the, here's the thing, Dan. We can look at these net rankings and, and automatically see something that just doesn't make a lot of sense. These net rankings right now are still rewarding teams for road wins. Can't look at SLU and say, okay, we should judge them and punish them based off of the fact that they missed a month of games because of a widespread outbreak. If you ask these guys to play through the season, you have to take into account that some of them are going to be damaged because of it in terms of their schedules, the amount of games they played. Now, the Billikens did hurt themselves, Dan, by losing that game at Dayton in the way they did. That was one of their two losses when they first came back from their month off. They looked so much better after that. They beat LaSalle, a team they lost to after their, their lengthy pause. They needed to beat Dayton to prove that they're back in action. They, they had a disappointing game. There's still time. What have you thought of the job of Conzo Martin? And for people that don't know, you covered him closely at Tennessee, and now you cover him here with the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. What do you think of the overall job he's done, especially this year? I think it's it's been pretty impressive. I mean, this team was picked to finish 10th in the SEC, Dan, and at one point they were ranked 10th in the nation. Um, they had a bad losing streak. Three games, they snapped out of it with a win at South Carolina. They need to keep, uh, you know, finishing on a high note. That needs to be the worst part of their season. But I think it's hard to, to minimize the fact that they played two of those games without Jeremiah Tillman, who has lost two grandmothers this year. It's been a hard year for him personally, a really strong year for him on the court. I think that they have as many good wins as any team in, in the country. They have to be playing their best basketball in order to make a run in the tournament, but I think that they've done enough there without a complete collapse here that they should be a tournament team. Now, how, the, how far they go after that is going to depend on how well they're playing when they get there. I, I think it's fascinating to see spring football. It is here. Jim Sturk talking about that, how Eli Drinkowitz didn't have that opportunity a year ago. Now he's got it, and the momentum is going in the right direction, isn't it? It really is, and I think his enthusiasm, his energy has got a lot of folks fired up. What he's been able to do in terms of recruiting, also getting some guys to stick around and say, yeah, I'll use that extra extra year of eligibility to come back. There's a really good energy right now between the two coaches at Mizzou, and they're two guys who are going to do it the right way. Um, they're going to be accountable, and, and, they're, and they're, I think they're, they're two coaches in Conzo and Eli that fans can say, okay, you know, this success is going to happen if these guys continue to – continue to stay on the job and get support. And that's all you can ask for in a college program. Guys who aren't going to get the university in trouble, guys who are going to, going to, going to work hard and put a team on the, on the field or court that you can get behind. I think both of those guys are doing that. And I'll wrap it up with this. Arch Madness is here. It's always fun in St. Louis. I think it's a two-team uh, bidding situation to get into the, the big dance, and maybe three if you have an upset in Arch Madness. But 
How do you size up what's going to happen at uh, Enterprise Center? It's college basketball at its best. And I, I remind folks, too, who are talking this year about, hey, maybe some of these teams should opt out of the conference tournament or maybe they should get rid of them all together to protect the NCAA tournament. As my, as my friend Brendan Weesey would say, bull roar, Dan. This is a part of March Madness. This is part of the glory. This is part of the, the magic. Um, teams that go from, from sleeping in the conference standings to somehow winning the conference tournament to making a run. We've seen Loyola be that team to come out of Arch Madness. Um, you know, you go back to NC State, Jim Valvano's championship NC State team that, that won the, the ACC tournament. This is where it begins. So Arch Madness is, to me, the beginning of the best part of college basketball. I'm so happy they're having it, and, and I hope that uh, folks are as excited for it as I am. All right, Ben, thanks as always. Be safe down in Jupiter. That's Ben Fredrickson of the St. Louis Post-Dispatch for Jim Sterk, the Athletics Director at Missouri, and also Doug Elgin, the Commissioner of the Valley. We say thank you for watching. We do this every Sunday, 1030 on Fox 2.